We call this, or I call this, the banked reps theory, okay? And, and, and we adopted this way of practicing. And so the banked reps theory, and if we had to define it, I guess, is, you know, a deliberate and fundamental reps are taken over a period of time should compound and improve the, the player's performance, okay? And that's the key part. Player performance is at the heart of this practice structure, okay? And again, so I'll say that one more time. Deliberate and fundamental reps taking over a period of time should compound, right? Like money in the bank should compound into an improved player performance, all right? So the theory behind that is, is every time a player takes a rep, okay? And a rep, in my mind, is meeting room, walkthrough, indie, group, okay? Team setting, anytime they take a rep, okay? That rep becomes stored Okay, or banked in the player's mind and muscle memory. Okay, it gets stored or banked in their mind or muscle memory, and so we want to be able to keep drawing out those those investments when it comes to Friday night, and we want to keep putting in those investments, keep putting money into the bank over the course of not just really a season, but the course of of an off season and, and really a calendar year. Okay, so the one thing that's really important is, is as more reps are banked, okay, more reps are put into the bank. Player performance increases and time spent is decreased. All right. The other thing is, is that we want to simulate things that will happen in a game. Like I said earlier, our kids were not getting enough time of actually playing the game and playing with the unpredictability of it. And so what we want to do is create situations in our team or group settings where coordinators are calling plays based on the situation, not a script. Okay. Down and distance was a factor, okay, where kids were actually having to think about, it's second and medium, what does that mean? It's third and short, what does that mean? What are we expecting, okay? Um, practice substitutions, right? We want to have periods where we're off the field, no coaches are on the field, and kids have to come in and out, all right? Situations where somebody gets injured, right, and, and we say, hey, so-and-so's down, and the next guy's got to go up, all right? Penalties, that was an issue with us many years prior to this, because we never practice what happens when a penalty happens and then our guys having to back up and what that really means, right? What that means to a drive. And so being able to simulate those situations, maybe manufacture them for the kids or let them come up organically in a team setting, okay? We were able to do that more this past year, all right? And then we also want to always ask the question, what is the most valuable way for us to practice 11 on 11, right? Is that going ones on ones? Is that going ones on twos? It's, is that doing pod work? Is that doing group work? Okay. There's times where, where the best answer for 11 on 11 is not us going ones on ones and it's not us going scouts. It might be us walking through something where our JVs are just out there standing out, out there and we're doing alignments or we're doing targeting. That might be the best answer depending on where we're at in, in, in the year. The best answer might be we're going to go hard ones-on-ones for a 12-play drive, and, and whatever happens, happens. It just depends where you're at in the season and what your team needs.